everybody welcome to yet another exciting edition of ergo pulse coming from a little hiatus but uh you know we had a nice little couple of months of rest well actually we didn't we've been working away and doing ergo stuff but you know you haven't seen us so we're probably not really doing anything because that's how the crypto space works right uh if, if you're if you're not out there and just telling everybody everything minute by minute nothing is happening right yeah anyway we're here oh yeah we do have the amas though so so that does happen so i guess yeah yeah that that, that is kind of like our, our our weekly report to the community okay so right so we have been doing work and we have evidence but today is not about that today is about the new ergo pulse and well come on joe you have any any ergo any ergo pulse up uh, jokes today or, or what uh, I'm, i've kind of burned through those i'm excited about uh, talking about terahertz you know blockchain technology is built around this idea of p2p money which you know can spring up a uh, grassroots community and there's one thing in human culture that has a tendency to create like grassroots movements and that is music and so uh terahertz is going to try to deliver blockchain tools for uh people in the music industry or just musicians in general uh neat plan so let's uh dive into it uh michael take us through what you yes. would like to see from a high level yeah yeah uh hey everyone uh my name is michael in case you didn't know i'm in charge of a swamp.audio who as the record label that started the terahertz project um so really high level um you know what we were was a, a music label um for since uh 2013 uh, i've been distributing electronic music hip-hop um, various types of uh really avant-garde stuff um to spotify title itunes all the uh various platforms out there i've been working with uh, artists from around the world I have contracts with people in the UK and Australia, and uh, you know I have a little bit of knowledge when it comes to contract law and how that works uh, when it comes to media publication, how you can track royalties and rights of something. And so um, I was really interested in the crypto space initially when NFTs first came out because I said, hey, a non-fungible token that's on an immutable ledger, that sounds really cool for something like music and royalties tracking so i kind of want to look into that um but i didn't know really much anything about the blockchain so i kind of got involved as a miner first um started mining found ergo um found ergo could do nfts and stuff so i started trying to get involved in the nft market uh the images because i'm also a visual artist for many years so sold some one i sold one nft visual uh, on ergo but it's still better than i did on any other blockchain <laughs> and uh one thing that i noticed right off the bat was that just having you know metadata and stuff in the registers of the nft itself isn't quite uh good enough um so to speak from a, a legal standpoint when you're talking about um, distribution so it, you know the difference between just an audio file on your computer and something that is on title is it's been distributed. You know, there's a group of global entities that agree that this file with this identifier and this uh, code that we give it is what it is and you own it and it's gonna be on title and it's tracked. So there's a middleman organization that does that. And uh, there's, uh, you know, a lot of, the artist doesn't know a lot about that whole process. So um, with NFTs, I think, there's a lot of room to give visual clarity to the artists about how they're, um, whether it's visual art or music, how it's you know transferring around, how people are getting it, how much it's making. Um, but the issue is, uh, up until this point, uh, the issue is that, you know, if for a legal agreement for me to release music out there, there needs to be a way to uh, cancel that contract you know, for some reason, whether it's uh, my family uh, after my death wants it canceled because it was part of my will, or whether it's uh, an act of God causes a partnership to break up musically, there needs to be a way to nullify contracts. Um, and there needs to be a way to uh, have responsible parties that aren't just the artist involved um, in the distribution so that there can be um, 
I guess, a goodwill actor, right? In case two people hate each other and they can't reach an agreement. So um, an arbiter, so to speak. So um, enter Ergo, right? So the Ergo blockchain does all this cool stuff. And then Ergo hack is coming up. So we decided to take place an Ergo hack with Swamp. And uh, that kind of skyrocketed, you know, Swamp turned into um, an IDO launch with ErgoPad, um, which spawned the Terahertz project, which is a token on top of the Ergo block- blockchain. Um, the token uh, is going to be used on our platform when, you know, our platform opens uh, either end of year or beginning of next year early. And uh, you can stake it to individual artists or you can stake it to the platform. Um, we have a lot of plans on how to use the platform, not just for music distribution, but for uh, events and for you know uh, people to collaborate on their music together, for people to meet each other, uh, for artists to meet fans, and to just kind of bring about a community in you know the, the music space, but also kind of gathered around the crypto ecosystem as a sort of uh, foundation. So I've got a question for you. Um, yeah. Tell me about your platform. Uh, what do you envision in terms of, let's say I'm a guy that, I don't know, I can sing, right? I can just melt people with my voice. How could I use your platform? Like, what do you, what do you envision uh, for somebody with uh, that talent? Yeah. So um, I want to give people the tools that they need uh, on the platform to be able to be successful and, you know, reach their audience. Right. So um, one of the one of the tools that has kind of been in development is a online DAW. So you can write into the write into the website, record your voice, um, or record if you've got a guitar with you and you got a nice uh, microphone to record it in. You can record it directly into the website, and uh, from there, you know, exploring ideas like turning that audio waveform, like the visual waveform, into a physical merchandise product, like a shirt or a keychain. Uh, with a QR code that leads to the NFT so that you can play the audio file, scan it. Q- so like lots of ways that we can kind of uh, interact with these people who want to create media. So someone can record their voice into the platform, turn it right into an NFT, and then put that right into their NFT shop on the platform. So they've got their profile page. They've got a page of their acapellas that they've been recording, whether it's, you know, a whole new world or whether it's a, uh, happy from you know so they can have all those uh those files right there so you know trying to minimize the amount of other tabs people need to keep open or need to go to their desktop to do stuff and you know just trying to keep people engaged on the platform um that's one thing you know we're trying to create areas for um events so like a a social engagement around an event um like a specific page with people interacting on it and like notifications and chat boxes. And, um, you know, there was, there was a day, you know, where I remember where, you know, things were very social on, uh, event marketplaces. And, uh, it was really easy to find a good event based upon what music was playing. And, uh, it seems like there's just a lot of noise now. So I want to create really good filtering so people can find local stuff in their area or find stuff based upon what sounds good to them. I'm trying to deliver, I guess just a website and a platform that has all the services that they need, whether they're a musician or, or a fan, I guess, because platforms seem to cater to one or the other. And uh, it just, you know, there's not a lot of good platforms out there for musicians to begin with, because a lot of them are just like prop, huge profit models that just try to turn the musician and their media into the product rather than the customer. So um I just think that there's room to kind of approach both the consumer of music and the people who make it and give them a better experience. That's really cool, you know, because um, I mean, the the a, a big buzz in the NFT community right now is royalties, right? And so there's been talk about uh, you know OpenSea ta- uh, doing that, or uh, you know, just in general, gaming uh, uh, NFT royalties from gaming, NFT royalties from just IP, right? Because um, you know, we we, we uh, I mean, I love JPEGs, but and uh, and BMPs and uh, and uh, whatever PNGs, 
of monkeys and stuff. But uh, you know, we 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 do need to expand the, sp- the space. We need to mature the space, and I think this is a great great way of uh, kind of utilizing other um other aspects of nfts right and uh just specifically you know for music i mean there, there's a lot of different uh, different ways but music is a great use case yeah. um so I'm, I'm really excited to to you know to have you in the ecosystem and what i'm actually kind of um i wanted i, I would like for you to give your um personal experience of um of growing inside the ecosystem right so you touched on it a little bit so you you joined ergo hack uh you uh you know you 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 kind of you know they was that was your debut into the ecosystem but kind of working with uh working with marty and uh uh ergo pad uh participating in ergo hack i mean it's kind of you know i know i know i'm doing kind of like out of order but uh you also said that you were uh, you were also working with uh with spectrum um so i just really want uh, the audience to really kind of get a gist of of somebody who's basically building a project inside the ecosystem utilizing all the tools that we have in the ecosystem all these different other entities in the ecosystem and what has been your uh I guess your user experience and, and, and be honest, you know, it's a, we, we know that not everything is, 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 uh, is 100% we're a growing ecosystem. So be honest. I think that's what the, the audience is really going to value is a really honest assessment from somebody who kind of came into the ecosystem. You already had a, 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 a business, right? You basically whip three your, your existing business through the Ergo ecosystem. So, so please kind of give us a bit of a rundown on that. So the initial experience with Ergo has been very beautiful uh, in many ways. Uh, the development community is extremely strong and extremely helpful. And that's, you know, a great thing for someone who is, you know, sometimes you get caught up in building a product and you get the blinders on like a horse in a race. And, uh, you know, it's, it's hard to see certain things. And having a community of developers out there that can see things and help you with stuff and so focused on open source and kind of on a common goal, that's uh, been a great thing to take part in. And Ergo Hack was super inspiring. Um, I mean, I personally worked really hard during that and I felt really proud of what I did, but then I saw other people work really hard and deliver stuff that I felt like was way more talented than mine. And it was like, okay, so how can I make my stuff better? How can I participate next time? What can I do? Um, The ecosystem is still really young, so there's not a lot there which means there's a lot of opportunity. And for someone who sees opportunities and like, how do do we make them a reality now using this platform that's been given us, given to us. Um, So like Ergo, I mean, I tried developing on, um, on Ethereum a little bit. I tried learning Solidity. I tried learning um, Pact a little bit and some other stuff. And, you know, no other community is like Ergos, first of all, from like, you know, the discords and the telegrams, no other community is just as active and as engaging as Ergos is from a development perspective. But it just seems like there's not as much going on on the other chains. And it's it's just like, how is that possible when there's like real development happening on this chain over here? I see like real encryption, real, real solutions happening. Like, I, I forget who implemented it, but the ability to encrypt and decrypt um, the content of uh, an NFT's message. Uh, that's really cool. <laughs> like the ability to mix stuff on chain. That's very, very cool. Like there's a lot of really good principles that have been put into Ergo that I really agree with. Um, so it's been great to take part in. Um, but where that's been difficult is, you know, the lack of documentation, the lack of, you know, what is out there is very minimal. So you know, we're all caught up in our projects, pushing forward on like what we're trying to deliver to deliver value to the ecosystem, you know, but for more people like me to be delivering more value to the ecosystem, there needs to be, you know, stuff for them, stuff for them to walk on documentation, shoulders of giants for them to, you know, carry it, carry them. And so um, I think that's an important part that, you know, it's not being as focused on right now as much as it should be. I think actually like in a bear market might be the better time to focus on the documentation, right? Maybe, I don't know. Yeah, but, that's, a, um, that's a good idea to put out some bounties or, you know, developers that things are a little slow. 
I like that. But um, you know, as as far as like yeah, working yeah. with Ergo, it's been great. Yeah, I'm really glad to hear that your your overall experience has been positive, and it's really, uh, I mean, it is really valuable for us to uh, hear the you know the feedback that you just gave us about the documentation about uh, kind of the difficulties developing an ecosystem because the more projects that de decide to develop on Ergo because of 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 the beautiful parts of it, you know, they are going to run into that, and we need to as a community to really start concentrating on that um a lot more and just to kind of give give more tutorials more more documentation and more ways of uh for people to just uh you know get the uh you know ma make a cookbook out of it the ergo cookbook yep. i say we call it so i imagine a lot of people let's say in the music industry these days are using something like bandcamp or spotify or you know one of these uh let's say services that are pretty popular um, is your service going to interact with those and the blockchain as well? Like how, how do you see that balance uh, coming? Cause I know people are probably familiar with existing services, but then when you get into right. the blockchain so, stuff, uh, when we look at uh Bandcamp versus Spotify or title and, and you know, we have to kind of put them into just two different categories because uh, Bandcamp is, and has been more about um, sort of a, a more independent distribution scheme where the artist can upload their own content or the label can upload their own content and manage their own metadata. In many ways, we're modeling our platform more around the Bandcamp model from a backend perspective, how people can manage their content um, because it is and has been for many years a safe haven for artists and musicians. Bandcamp has been a great service. I'm very fond of Bandcamp. Um, one of the big things that pushed me to kind of create something different was uh, Bandcamp's acquisition by e uh, Epic Games. So um, I don't see, you know, very good future for it when it comes to merging with Epic Games and, you know, what they're trying to do with NFTs on the ETH marketplace. And um, I just see it as a, what, what was a really good product being purchased by another large conglomerate and being ruined, uh, even though it's not quite ruined yet. So um, now backtracking a little bit to the other half of your question, um, our platform is currently being built out on the back end to have API connections to um, what we call distribution aggregators, which sends the music to Tidal, Spotify, Deezer, all of the major platforms you would listen to it on that you pay monthly services uh, to. Um, that is very difficult to set up. There needs to be an entire metadata layer that contains every genre possible and every, you know, uh, region possible and every payment term possible. So that is being set up, but it's not part of our initial release. Um, this version one that we're releasing uh, end of year, uh, we are focusing on releasing a version one by the end of year that can do um, NFTs uh, as far as music, NFTs, audio, NFTs, music albums. So uh, multiple users collaborating on an album all on layer one. So no layer to, to uh, organize the content. It's all with a smart contract that we developed um, from scratch to be able to collaborate on the blockchain. So um, that's, part, that's mainly our goal is to get the NFT and the staking um, launched for the version one. And then through our major efforts in 2023, we're going to be marketing and pushing through, you know, to basically approach um, musicians anywhere and say, hey, we've got a platform for you. Now, I do have plans to turn, you know, the NFT side of it into the bigger scheme. However, you know, no musician is going to join the platform, you know, and take it seriously if it doesn't talk to Tidal and Spotify and all those other ones, because, you know, until IPFS um, gets a lot better, until more people adopt it, you know, it's streaming music is not going to be a reality from uh, decentralized services yet. Um, I hope to change that. I hope that I can take part in changing that, whether it's, uh, creating hardware as a service type deal where people can run their own local music uh, hosting node or whether there is uh, something that we can do to boost adoption, you know, f uh, to run ergo nodes uh, as a musician. If you do this, we can give you X or Y, um, you know, but it's going to take time to get there. And so we are building out classic uh, traditional model tools as well so that we can continue operating as a, 
what I would call a legacy business in the classic distribution space. And that's uh, more of a convenience to the artist than anything. I mean, because I mean, Spotify is where most people listen to their music and find it still. It makes a lot of sense. Yeah, uh, I mean, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, it does. It does. I mean, it's, um, uh, you know, it's, uh, we, we do have this bit of an attitude and well, not just, you know, not, not particularly in ergo, but uh, just in a blockchain space of, you know, screw all those guys, the, the, the web two, uh, screw all of it, you know, all the Spotify's and the Apple iTunes of the world. We're going to, we're going to build it ourselves. We're going to build everything ourselves from scratch. And look, while I, agree with the principle of the attitude where we need to drastically change decentralize and to really kind of give more um control to uh to to, to, to more people to have to have more change you know and take take away the control from these you know these cabals um i do believe that you know you do have to understand where adoption is most likely to start from and that is uh, utilizing services like this being friendly not with the service but with the client right. of the service you know so you're not necessarily if even if you're using the service doesn't mean that you're supporting their entire mission it just means that okay the users are still there right you're not just gonna stand in the middle of the street ring a giant bell and say yo come to us we're better and than Spotify, you know, erase Spotify, use us, you know, it's not going to happen. So I really do like that approach. Well, I think at the end of the day, I just need to provide the tools and the options to the artist because the artist, you know, has the right to choose if I want to distribute this to a standard platform like Spotify or Tidal, or I don't want to do that at all. I want to make it an NFT and approach that marketplace entirely. Um, it's up to the artist. And, and up until recently, we've had a lot of platforms that just take advantage of the artist and say, hey, you know, we are your only option to get this music on Spotify and Tidal and all those places. So we're going to take our percentage of it or we're going to put our, our copyright on it or whatever we do to make sure we get our cut. And uh, that's what I'm trying to eliminate is just, you know, giving them that service, but without that greasy in-between thing that, you know, tries to make a buck every every sale. You got the middleman, basically. Yeah. Trying to be more of a platform than a middleman. Yeah, that that's actually that's exactly what what, what I'm talking about. Um, uh, the well, I call it the aggregator effect, and it's not just with music. You know, it's actually it's happening all over the place. I mean, just uh, what what I'm building uh, with 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 ZenGate is it kind of has the same effect. You have aggregators that are monopolizing part of the value chain and making it hard for the people who are actually creating the actual creators of 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 the value are uh are are kind of being well they're kind of being kind of herded into particular uh you know particular buckets and if you don't want to be herded in that bucket you don't want to if you don't want to play ball you're not going to play at all you know it's so so it's 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 really good just the middlemen know that they've got a captive audience on both sides and so it's about taking the platforms that they've made because they've made platforms, they provide solutions and those solutions make things work for people. And that's why people use them. Uh, you know, we need to provide services as good or better using blockchain if we want people to adopt them. And that's my goal with this is to give them a, a platform that's like Bandcamp or SoundCloud or Splice, but they have the option of being completely decentralized. So it's not some big brother company that's doing it. It's just, hey, this is a community. It's run by the community. I put money into the platform. It helps run the platform. I get money from the platform because I staked and it worked out and people were, you know, I feel like there is more interest in that these days anyway than buying music because no one buys music anymore, but people are pitching into sp Patreon and subscribing to people on Twitch and Amazon. So there's a lot more of a creator economy Um now than there used to be but people are still making like a lot less money so that's what we're trying to flip the script on a little bit and just take away that middleman profit yeah also actually you know uh it's interesting that you mentioned that people don't buy i mean don't buy music don't buy i guess albums anymore so in japan uh, actually this well where i live um 
the music cultures have been different. There's actually still a pretty big CD culture, vinyl and CDs. And the reason being is that people want to own not just the music, but the experience around the music. So the actual 100%. album, right? So you own the album, you own the the physical copy of it. And it's not like they they, they like the, 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 the shape of the CD or they're particularly fond of whatever. It, they Well, they like the art. And they like to have that extra piece of collect uh, of collectible in their possession. Yep. And I think that with the NFT, with the use of NFT, you're giving them that. Actually, you're giving them that. But now it's on. You know, it's 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 digital, of course. But you are giving them that extra piece of ownership beyond just listening to the music. Yeah. And so I think that's really cool. If I could touch on that for a moment. So I've actually designed the swamp.audio front end so that when you're looking at an album or a song, the visual appeal of it, whether you're on a tablet, a desktop, or a mobile device, is more so that you're actually holding something in your hand. Um, it looks and feels like an album, like a CD cover, like a vinyl cover, just because of how I've designed it into the page. And I did that very purposefully because I want people to you know, feel like they actually are holding something you know, when they're listening to it. So they can actually show their friends, look at this album I'm listening to. It, you can see the art and the tracks on it and stuff. And um, you know, one amazing thing I think about the smart contract that we made is that you could theoretically aggregate all the files from that smart contract into an album display page like that and or create a physical product out of it like that. Um, it's just... Exactly. Like the collectible nature of music, the community aspect of going to a music store and talking to someone like about this, you know, vinyl that you're looking at next to them. Oh, you like them? Oh, I've heard them in concert. They're great. You know, that's kind of missing, you know, now it's gone. At least in the U.S. it is. Um, there's mm -hmm. very small music stores that you can go to that are still trying to keep that vibe alive. Uh, you know, I personally have some vinyls and a few CDs left, but mostly my collection is digital these days. <laughs> I mean, I love album art. Uh, in fact, uh, over here on my wall, I have uh, several uh, albums uh, that I framed because of the album art. I just love it. And I think that also gets lost a lot of times. And when you kind of pick, you know, pick and pluck uh, is a lot of the, you know, people put in a lot of time into the album art, you know, and that is part of the experience. And I really think, again, a platform like yours can potentially give back that experience with the NFT aspect of it. Uh, you can bring back the album art. You can bring back the the pride of ownership of not just the actual music, but everything that comes with the experience. Exactly. So that's really, really cool. Interestingly enough, so the entire, if you look at our website and look at an album on our website, the entire album, it's a designed web page. However, all the content on that web page uh, for the design is saved in a markdown file. That markdown file is a mintable thing. Um, and so in theory, you could mint the entire design of the album alongside of the music tracks and put them into our smart contract. And then you have an actual full album with the album art on layer one. Um, I, I personally am very excited about uh, about your platform and about really, you know, kind of digging into it and being able to own this music and, and the experience that you're talking about. So give us some some timelines um when can when can we really kind of use it what, what does your roadmap look like basically so we've been working really hard to get a user area something that people can log into um, by the end of the year because we've been working on it for months and we built out all the user stuff all the back end stuff is completely built out so it's really all front end uh now so making sure that um you know the dashboards look pretty and that they've got all the right forms that people need to fill out um Really, I'm really hoping to get launched by end of year, December 30th. That's my major goal. I'm really pushing hard for it. And, you know, if that, if we do that, I'll be very happy. Um, I won't also be hard on myself if we don't, because I know it's such a big project to launch. However, um, I'm thinking that we can just based upon the current list of deliverables we need to do. Um, that'll be a V1 launch. Like I said, it'll have a user area for people to log in as a artist or as a user, just a listener. And I'll have the ability for people to uh, DAP connect. So we have a DAP connector working uh, that we developed and uh, we have a, 
so besides the DAP connector, we just need to tie in the smart contracts to our front end. Um, so that's our V1 launch and the V2 launch, I guess V2 would be us adding more functionality into the platform and building out, you know, the uh, Spotify title distribution mechanisms. So I can't give you an estimated time on that one. Let's just, just say six months after the initial launch, maybe um, just based upon so how development is going. It's, it's just soon. <laughs> six months or yeah, soon. Tra trademark. <laughs> soon. TM. No, that's yeah. Well, that's uh, looking forward to that. Well, that, we that's will... good. It's transparency. You know, it's 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 good for the space. I mean, don't 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 uh, give uh, bullshit timelines. You know, don't, I'm not good uh, at marketing things that don't, don't exist. give timelines. <laughs> um, <laughs> I, yeah, vaporware. Nobody likes that. Did you yeah. that, Dan? Welcome to Ergo. This guy's he deserves to be here. That's always uh, what the ecosystem has been about. Because we have a ton of applications that are live, and you know they don't have a lot of marketing or tokens or anything. Because wasn't really the point. Well, yeah, people just want people just want cool stuff on chain, and they want it to work, and they want to use it. That that's the thing. We want to. We just want to use it. You know, we don't want to. We don't want uh, announcements of announcements. What is this Tron? Yeah, it's uh, we we just want stuff to work, and 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 that's great. You know that you have that attitude. Actually, uh, yeah, I, I and I love that attitude about just just the the ergo ecosystem. You know, I mean, we have some big projects that. Or, you know they, they do marketing but they don't do they, they don't like over market i think you know um like say for example uh, uh spectrum is one of them right so spectrum i mean spectrum does their their fair share of marketing and they do fair share of pr and community and stuff like that but they, they they're they're delivering right it's it's a they're delivering a product mm -hmm. you know you you know you, you and your project you're here, right? So this is in a way marketing for you, but you already have, you, you, you're cooking, right? You're not just kind of like thinking about it. It's like, well, you know, once we do a token sale and, uh, you know, we finish our, you know, uh, series A, B, C, and uh, X, Y, Z, uh, maybe we'll give you a couple of screenshots. Yeah, it's not, uh, that, that's, that's everything that's wrong with the blockchain space, actually, is, I mean, is, is uh, over-promise, under-deliver. You know, if I can be harsh, a lot of the blockchain projects that I see, not, you know, uh, actually a lot of projects on Ergo chain I see are very, very good and come from really good developers, but a lot of other projects and other chains, it just looks like a computer science major got a template that they bought and just whooped a bunch of JavaScript into it to connect to a blockchain. And it was just like, hey, look, I can get a million dollars from people for, for doing this. And it's like, what, <laughs> why is there nothing behind that project? And people are putting money on it. I don't understand. I mean, the main, the main issues really with the chain, with, with, with the blockchain space are just that right now, uh, just people trying to copy pasta web 2.0 into web three and people are just trying to copy pasta in general. Uh, there are a lot of other problems that we can solve with blockchain. Okay, what are they? And that's, again, that is why I'm really, really excited about your project is because we don't have enough of this. We don't have enough of this kind of util utilization of uh, of NFTs, right? Um, this this kind of thing where you are kind of, you're, you're not trying to whip three, a web two thing, right? You're thinking of Web three, and you know the Web two part of it, right? You know the 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 the, the legacy way of 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 running a record label. Um, you understand the user because also that's something else. Um, a lot of projects, and even in our ecosystems, um, not a lot, but some in our ecosystems do tend to do that uh, sometimes, right? So the, the, you're going to have a couple of guys that are really smart and they want to build something. You know, they think is really exciting, right? And they think, oh, this is going to be great. We're going to build this thing and it's going to be awesome and uh, it's going to do all this crazy shit. And then they don't go to talk to their to their end user, right? They don't go, go and talk to their customer, which is actually one of the first things you should do is when you build out a system, understand your customer, understand your end user. Have you spoken to people? Have you spoken to your uh, target use, uh, user base as, uh, for your platform? Um have you kind of zeroed in on what they want to see, what they don't want to see, what's going to help them, why they're going to come to you versus just kind of going the old, you know, the the, the way that they're using the stuff right now? Yeah. 
I have talked to um, a bunch of artists from my label. Um, I haven't done a lot of outreach outside of my own label, but I know the sentiment is basically the same. And that's NFTs are garlic to a vampire right now when it comes to musicians, because they saw what happened with images, uh, open sea, they saw the monkeys and they're like, what is this? There's a lot of money flying around. I'm scared of this. This is just another place for me to get taken advantage of. Some of them are really excited to like get involved. Like, yeah, I could put my music on a marketplace and maybe get a billion dollars. Who knows? But then there's a lot more people that are just saying like, I'm not even going to touch it. And so, um, you know, part of this whole project is actually developing what story are we telling people so that they can understand what's going on? Because it's not just about like, hey, you're investing money in crypto and making a bunch of money from it. It's about, hey, you're taking place in a decentralized system and supporting an economy of people that are truly working together on something and not taking, you know, not trying to give profits to someone that doesn't deserve it. Yeah. So, um, you know, it, it's really hard. It's going to be hard to market to those people. And so why, what I've been trying to do is just really build out a service that works and not market it as hype, not fluff it up, not say, Hey, I'm working on this, but it's not here yet. It's not going to be here for six months. It's just here it is. Boom. It works. Um, at the end of the year, this year, that's my goal. And then marketing is going to be a huge major effort for next year in terms of adoption, uh, the customer story, getting people on board. Cause I think once you know, if your favorite artists use a plat use a platform to distribute their album, you're going to go to that platform to get it, and then you're going to find other musicians on that platform. It's just it's a snowball effect. As long as you have people using that platform, the musicians using the platform, you'll have the other part of the user base use using it as well, um, slowly but surely. So, most of our efforts are going to be targeted towards musicians and artists first, and venues and labels. You know, people that create the events and create the media so that they can attract the other audience, which is the users and the consumers of music. Um, but not to say we aren't going to market to those people, we are, but the major efforts are gonna be getting uh, artists on the platform to prove its utilization at first. Awesome. It's funny when NFTs launched on Ergo, in my mind, I was like, oh, this makes so much more sense for music than for art, just because of, you know the royalty aspect of uh music distribution like you, you you run a label yeah so if you uh let's say outsource some of your uh content to other parties how do you even verify uh, whatever royalties you get paid how do you know that that's true it's a good question we do sign a contract uh based upon certain terms um i think i have one one song ever that's been selected for a movie placement from our record label. And that's pretty rare even for any label, let alone a small one. But we have, uh, you know, one documentary that, you know, used one of our songs because I submit uh, for our own record label. Uh, and just to clarify as well, uh, Swamp.audio is a record label. Uh, it operates as its own label with its own roster of music and artists. Uh, the terahertz project and the dow is also its own little social network um, where people will be able to release their own music but it's not necessarily released on the swamp music label that's a separate entity um but being said you know how do you track that uh trust good faith nowadays actually in the, the light of the last couple of years you have a lot of really good open apis that are being pushed out by companies you know um, at least Spotify title, all the big companies are hiring good developers now to get good APIs going. Um, who you really can't trust is the middlemen who make those placements and who do those signing deals because they're the ones who they could be taking anything off the top and you don't know because they're the ones just sending you one PayPal payment with uh, Excel spreadsheet attached to the email. Um, so blockchain is, uh, you know, it, it, ever since I saw blockchain, I was like, oh, great. This is a 100% what we need. Um, at Bitcoin came out. I was like, okay, this is really cool, but I think it's not like quite like the first thing, the first person or first thing to do anything is probably not the right thing. Right. It's like the person who hurts the most um, from getting there because they experience the most pain along the way. 
and then they they did all the hard work for the next guy um so i kind of saw bitcoin as like not really maybe the best solution um for music because it was just like inflating super hard and not not to say that it's not a hedge against inflation on its own but um music is very transactional you know it's very like a to b right now like i need this right now um we needed something a little bit more like ergo smart contracts, you know? Um, but, um, I digress. So yeah, it's just, uh, it's been a shit show for many years for many people trusting their, their managers their, and labels have gotten a bad rap, rap too throughout the years, you know, for mismanaging their artists and mismanaging funds. Uh, and it used to be that labels did a lot more of funds allocation and tour management and artist management than they do now. Nowadays, labels are pretty much just, glorified collectors of music and artists. Um, and some of them are still doing tours for bigger artists, but really it's kind of the model has become sign as many artists as you can to distribute them to Spotify. It doesn't matter how good they are, just sign them. That's kind of the model. Um, so the model that we're trying to promote is, you know, community run, like get your music on the platform. If it's good, the community will vote on it. We can release it. You know, the DAO will have power over releases that get published to the DAO's label. Um, you know, there's all sorts of ways that we can bring back sort of that community aspect of it. Yeah, I'm excited to see that happen. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Well, Michael, listen, thank you very much for coming on Ergo Pulse. Um, it's great to have you. It's great to really have your project in the ecosystem. I know I said it several times, but it's it's really refreshing because again it's it's a real world use case you are you know you seem to have the ergo attitude about you know just just make shit happen you know just just make it you know don't 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 ring the bell too much just make it yeah and you're making it and uh, i wish you the best of luck i personally will be using your your your, your platform once everything is launched and live and uh absolutely please keep us informed please the community keep the community informed about your progress and uh yeah thank you very much yeah, i've said thank it for you when somebody builds on ergo open source i'm on their team so i'm happy to uh help however i can thank you thank you joe thank you dan i really appreciate both of you guys as well and you know you guys have uh been inspiring as well on the dev updates to keep me going you know seeing all the all the stuff that's happening is continually inspiring so building together absolutely absolutely well thanks again for coming on the show and hope to see you soon absolutely <laughs>